He is a former Michigan State University running back, former first-round pick of my hometown, Atlanta Falcons. If you're listening here in the city of Atlanta, your hometown, Atlanta Falcons, in 2002. He's now going by uh, Todd Duckett. You guys may know him as TJ Duckett. Give him a warm, warm round of applause right quick. Now, you know, the first thing we got to get out the way, Todd, first thing we got to get out the way is you got to tell the people the story. I've read it for myself, but you tell the people the story about uh, transitioning from uh, no longer being called TJ to now being called Todd. Of course. Yeah, man. Hey, thanks for having me on the show. I appreciate it. No problem. Well, it all, it all started after I got done playing football. I went through a depression. I mean, playing, being able to achieve a dream as a child and to live it and to reach it and have my identity be that for as many years and have success doing it. And the minute it was over, I had no place to latch on to. I had nothing. I had no place to call home. So in that in that process, I tried to figure out what else was my life about. And, and knowing and feeling that there was more than just being a football player, being an athlete. So I had to completely strip everything down. I had to. Uh, I went on a 40-day fast to just water. I changed the way that Look, my come name. On. Back, back up, back up, back up. Yeah, I think you need to repeat. Yes, sir. How many days? 40, 40 days, 40 nights. And just 40 drinking. 40 days and 40 nights. Now, dude, you're a big dude now. Like, me and you about the same size. Like, right now, I'm rocking about 6'1", 250. You know what I mean? I know you played okay. around around that weight. Yeah. Like, at what yeah. point, at what point in 40 days of not eating was you like, man, yeah, I don't know if this going to work, man. 40 days, well, cuz? I mean, it was, it was, yeah, man. I mean, at, at, that, at that time, I was at the bottom of the pit, man. I was in the dark space. And all I could do is, relig- is rely on my religion to help me get there. And so just like where I was emulating Walter Payton's, Jerome Bettis, his running backs that I wanted to be, I wanted to emulate men and actually just people that did things throughout of life that helped humanity. The Gandhis, the, the Martin Luther Kings, the Malcolm X's. These are all things that these men changed the world. They cared about other people. What were some of their workouts? What were some of their techniques? And, and, and coming from different cultures and different religions, different space, they all had a 40-day fast in common. My so God. once I noticed that, I jumped on it. And it was no different than being out in a hot summer day and, and your coach is telling you to run 200, 5, 200, 10, 200, 20, 200. You're going to do it if that's going to make you successful. Yeah. So yeah. that was what I saw. And, I mean, I lost 70 pounds. I, I ended up about 180 pounds, didn't recognize myself which allowed me then to transform my mind, body, and soul into what matters now and who I am now. And that's Todd, and that's volunteering, giving, and serving, and being able to be an asset to the world in a positive way. My man, sounds good to me. And don't forget you guys to follow him the way I do on Twitter and Instagram, at Todd Duckett. Um, Also, you can can check him out at TJDuckett.com. Now, I've got you on here. Everyone knows you're big-time running back in college, big-time running back. coming out of college and in the NFL. But before we get to the sports, there's something that you're involved with, something that you're kind of, kind of at ground zero with, something that I've been talking about here on this show for a couple of weeks now, something that really uh, ha- has my attention a lot. It's the Flint, Michigan water yeah. crisis. Um, now, yeah. I need to get the latest from, from ground zero because now we know about that they're going to switch the water, the water supply back. Uh, the lawsuits have started rolling in. A uh, bunch of, I guess, yeah. a bunch of union plumbers donated their time to put filters in people's homes because apparently yeah. you can't bathe with bottled water. <laughs> apparently, that's not a yeah. thing. Yeah. So, other than those things, like what's happening now? And that's what that's those things are in full effect. What right? What's happening now is people are just trying to understand how to survive a daily life. They went from being able to live, I mean, the way you live, turn on the faucet, do whatever you need to do, and all the things that come with everyday life. Now they're trying to figure out what, what do, how do I bathe? How do I shower? Mm. And not only how do I do it, but where can I find, who allows me to pick up water? Who's going to help? Who do I trust? Who's out there really in it for us? I mean, the people have gone through so much. And to now, I mean, to really not know how long they have been drinking this water, having this water be a part of their life. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a different thing to read about it and to see it on TV. It's completely different when you have to go there. And even when you're there, 
the things that you unconsciously you unconsciously go and wash your hands, and and that's what you're used to. Right. And you can't do that. You unconsciously may see a drinking fountain. I mean, what really what really what really touched me that one one of the many things I did was we went to a, a elementary school. We go to this elementary school, and I mean, I, I, I remember when kids used to want to be the ones to to take the the chalkboard eraser to the cleaner. You know what I'm saying? You want to you want to go clean the eraser. Right. Man, you got kids now, the same kids, they're going to the auditorium to get a case of water just to wheel back to their room. I mean, it's just different to see and and to hear um, people talk. There's a group that I'm involved with called Voices for Flint, and we just started tell, talk, telling the stories of what's going on from the people. And to hear the people talk, I mean, you don't... It, it, it's, it's, it's touching when, when, a, when a father tells his, his four-year-old daughter that it's bad time, and she goes and gets a bottle of water and stands by the fireplace. Damn. I mean, that, that's not what it's about as a kid, but that's what they know. And so the the, the resilience, the way that they will overcome this is, is, is there. Right now, it's just trying to figure out how are we going to survive it and what are our resources going um, allow us to get there in a better way. And speaking of kids, man, the, the thing that, that really caught my ear about this was when the doctor started talking and she started talking about how lead not only could affect a kid today, like the kids that are drinking it now, it's like a generational things, things like learning disabilities, yeah. things like even criminality yeah. has been linked to, to yeah. uh, lead intake. And I'm like, man, that, that to me is, that's a crime against a society. And I'm asking you, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm stating it that way. Cause I want to know what are the, the developments in, uh, possibly prosecuting the governor that made the call on 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 switching over the water source. You know, I know that that's out of that's out of where I, my range right there, man. I, I don't know because a lot of people are pointing fingers. They're saying they did it. They saying they didn't know. I mean, mm. so many people are are, are are pointing fingers. But okay, it's here. It happened. Let's try to figure out what we can do to fix it. Right. What we can do to make it better. I mean, we have so many babies being born not breathing. Because of the embryonic fluid is poison, is lead in it from the mother drinking water. I mean, thinking they're doing what's right. I mean, there's so many things. Uh, talking to another guy, talking about how it's it's similar situ- conditions to being in a third world country or being in jail. That's exactly I mean, what I thought about. It, you, you, you don't have the freedom. And this is a guy, he said he's been to prison before. And when he was in prison, the water was the same scenario. So then he wants to change his life to do right because he has a family now, and he's still living caged up. I mean, it's, it's powerful to think how these men and women are having to deal with this without no guide, without no handbook. They're just saying, here, this is a problem that you didn't create. Now you and your family figure it out, live through it, life or death situations, God be with you. <laughs> it's tough, man. It's tough to deal with. In America. He's uh, T.J. Duckett. You guys know him as T.J. Duckett. He's now known as Todd Duckett, former Michigan State running back, former first-round pick of the Atlanta Falcons in 2002. Make sure you guys are following him the way I do, at Todd Duckett on Twitter and Instagram, and check his website out, uh, tjduckett.com. Uh, one last thing about about this particular issue before we move on to the sports topic. Um, a lot of celebrities have, have you know shown their face and them standing in front of a bunch of bottled water and talking about them. Uh, uh, delivering or, or delivering water to the people of Flint. Um, how is that? How is how are those type of photo ops being received in that area of the country? Because I know people um, around here think it's great, 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 but in reality, it's still bottled water. And you're talking to me about kids taking bottled water baths by a fire by by a, a fireplace. It, it just seems like hey, you know it is what it is. It is a one hundred percent. We right now. We have to. Everyone has to get what, what they can get, and and if that is people taking pictures in front of huge bottles of water or huge traits and and pallets, then let's make sure the people get them pallets and make sure the people have a chance to utilize that water. I mean, we're only talking about this stuff. The winter now. Imagine when people are outside, kids are outside running and sweating. Yeah. They're gonna need to replenish themselves. I mean, just sitting there in the in the summertime. You're going to need to drink more water. So, I mean, we, uh, right now there's no solution. So since there's nothing new, we need to continue to get what we can, whether that's water, whether that's attention, whether that's awareness, whatever that is, we need to keep that energy there to allow those people to know, one, that we still believe and there's still hope, 
but also hopefully that brings a solution quicker for them. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely right. All right, now now to some some sports stuff, some things that, um, like basically, I'm 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 not gonna front since you've been here. These are questions that I've been wanting to ask you about, and now I think they're a little bit more pointed now, seeing as to where, uh, the position that you played, running back, is headed. Like you were yeah. at, you were one of the guys at the forefront of that, at the beginning of the whole thunder lightning running back by committee thing, and now it's it's pretty much yeah. the norm. So I want I want to ask you, a guy who who went through that, give me the positives and the negatives of playing in a system in where you're not the bell cow, the 20-25 touch a game guy, and you have to split your carries with another player. Yeah, no doubt, definitely. Well, to jump into the positives, the positives, man, you, you, you're sharing the load, so your body is not getting beat down in the same way, but also you're giving good looks to the other team, so... You may, I mean, big big back comes in, big back situation, little back comes in, little back situation, or vice versa. You get a chance to keep the, the defense off balance. You get a chance to utilize different specialties that they have. Um, ultimately, the game of football is the score and stop us. So to be able to have a team that's built around a multi-back punk feature, I mean, that's the easiest way. That way they can get some type of use to what backs in the game. The, uh, part of the negative, though, is you don't have a chance to really get warm. Mm-hmm. You can't really get, get 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 the defense. You can't wear the defense down like you want to. You can't really get in the flow of the game like you want to. So it's a difference where you can jump in the game and, you know, by 10, 15 carries, you already got everybody flowing. You can cut back in no time. You set, you've been setting this up all game. You've been wearing them down all game. Other times it's different when you come in the game and they know you're the big back, and you know it's third and one, and they know you're getting the ball, but you still got to stop them. You see what I'm saying? So I think if, if you can have, biggest thing, if you can have both backs be on the same page mm-hmm. and not be selfish, and both of them are working for an end goal to be that champion or whatever it means to that team, if you have both backs or even three backs committed to that, you should have three healthy backs by the end of the year that are ready to go no matter the scenario. What's going on in the world of college football where 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 now a a first round running back is an anomaly like you you came out in the first round and it wasn't you know it wasn't a big deal like good running backs got taken in the first round now for a running back like last year two went one ended up producing uh very well in Todd Gurley the other one Melvin Gordon kind of struggled the way you would anticipate a, a rookie running back struggling a little bit but even up to last year it's a big deal like running backs getting taken in the first round. What's going on uh, with the feeder system, the college in the college ranks that are? are, are... You know, um, I'm I'm, I'm going to say uh, part of it might might be the amount of carries these guys get. I mean, Gordon he, he had almost the most yards, if not the most yards in the history of the game. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a lot of mileage. I mean, to have a guy running back with a lot of mileage, and then the, and then the difference also could be. Uh, depending on the caliber of running back, depending on what program they come in from, are they are they are they pro ready? Are they able to pick up these blitzes? Are they able to train? Um, but if they if they have a lot of mileage on them and they already have a, a pull here or or a nick there, I mean they jump into that seventeen eighteen week season. I mean that's going to wear any rookie down. Yeah. And especially if you if you are the one carrying the mail and you don't have a lot of help up front, that's going to wear you down even more. So, I mean you're going to have some special guys that are able to come out and understand what it means to be a big back, little back, whatever they are. But going to that next level, they got to be a ball player. It's one Mike with Big Mike talking right now to former Michigan State running back, former first round pick of the Atlanta Falcons in 2002. You guys know him as TJ Duckett. He is now known as Todd Duckett. Follow him online, Twitter and Instagram at Todd Duckett. Um, I want to ask you about one of your former teammates, um, Michael Vick. Yeah. One of the, the yeah. more uh, polarizing, iconic figures right here in, in my hometown of Atlanta. Um, following his jail stint, he came out. And was very forthright about the fact that uh, he didn't work as hard as he probably should have. He didn't study the game as, as much as he should have. Now, it's kind of a combo question. As his teammate, did you see those things? And whether you saw them or not, I want you to tell the people how that affects the success of a team when the the quote unquote leader is not leading the way as far as uh, the preparation goes. Well, uh, I mean, true, like. 
Uh, I mean, Vince, he did. I mean, I that's it, it's a long time ago, man. You know what I'm saying? He, I mean, he came, he did his dues, he paid his dues, and to his teammates, I mean, he did what he had to do, he did his job, and and I never saw anything any different. But I mean, no matter if it's a quarterback, linebacker, whoever, coach, if a leader ain't providing what the leader needs to provide, they ain't they're, they're not getting the job done. And 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 that's that's across the board in any scenario. But as far as what he did off the field, I think he really paid his dues and served his time and we should move on from there. I wanna um touch on something that you mentioned earlier. You said like post uh, a lot of a lot of guys now are retiring at earlier ages and I I I suspect it's because one, financially they that they're equipped to and then two, the, the education of what uh, the game of football does to the to the human brain is more is more readily available. Um, you talked about retiring and, and falling into a dark place. Uh, were you were you or are you now concerned concerned going forward about some of the things that you put your body through as a player? Um, no, nah, I mean you. I, I'm not concerned about it just because. The, I mean, you never know. You never know what's out there. You never know how your body's going to react. Yeah, it was, it was a, it was a, especially the way I ran. Right, you're a big bag, I mean, a bruising hard, dude. Yeah, it was a hard style, and I mean that was the, that was the price you had to pay for 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 the job. You know, what I mean that was part of it, and and I hope now that I still eat right, I still work out, I still do the thing to take care of my mind, my body, my soul. I mean, doing crossword puzzles, doing different things to keep your brain active. Right. All those things I still do. I mean, as long as you do that, like any other person, I mean, I mean, things happen. You know, life happens. But speaking on my own self, um, the passion was gone. Didn't want to do it anymore, and thought there was something else I could do. And in the meantime, still have to strengthen your mind, your body, and your soul. Now, uh, I don't know if you have any kids or if, if you plan on, but if you if you do or if you uh, plan on having a son, uh, would would little TJ play play football? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I do have a son. He's two right now. Okay. And if he wants to play, I'm, he can go ahead and play. Go for it. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> you know? Go tell for it. Have fun. Tell me yeah. about... Uh, <laughs> go ahead. Uh, tell me about New World Flood. Tell me about that. New World, New World Flood, Flood in the World, to giving and service a single range up at a time. That's my nonprofit that I started about five years ago. And our whole mission is for people to believe in themselves from the inside out, knowing that one act of kindness, one positive thought, one positive action can't have an impact that changes the world. I mean, we do multiple things, giving Thanksgiving dinners, 1,700 Thanksgiving dinners to families here in Michigan, 2,000 backpacks to families in Michigan. Really get involved. You can check out our site, uh, www.newworldflood.org, for more info. But it's all about giving back from the inside out to sure who you are. Now, you said you talk about when you when you're on your fast dropping down. You said about 180. You said, yeah. Okay, yeah. so where where are you at now? Oh, I'm probably about 230 now. 230. 240. What, what what you mentioned? Because I, I I'm reading that you know in the, in, the, in the good old days uh, in the heyday you was at like 500. That's that that's that yeah, been the bar that's weight, cuz. Yeah, nah, nah, no no reason for that, man. Uh, if anything, I can show you a couple of yoga poses. Or something, you know, <laughs> oh, my <man. laughs> oh my man! Oh my man! On yeah. on that jailhouse workout, couple push ups, couple sit ups, and keep you know, moving. Oh, man. I, mean, I, ain't got, I ain't got I ain't got 300 pounds chasing me no more. It's I know that's right. Everything. I know that's right. Um, one last thing before we let you go, and I definitely appreciate your time. He's former Michigan State running back and former Atlanta Falcon running back, as well as uh, who else you played for? The Redskins, played for the Seahawks, yeah. the, uh, the Lions. Yeah. Uh, long-time NFL yeah. running back. He is Todd Duckett. You guys may know him as TJ Duckett. Follow him online on Twitter and Instagram at Todd Duckett. Now, uh, your former head coach at Michigan State, Nick Saban, um, give, me, give me some insight some 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 reflection some some reflection on the things that you saw out of him early on when you played at Michigan State that would have led you to believe that he would be this this godlike figure down in Alabama winning championships every damn year. I mean, he was he was that way at Michigan State, man. The the, the attention to detail, the focus, the the commitment, the passion that he has, and the way that he 
generates and pushes it all into his young men to make them better players. It holds them accountable. It shows them the progress. Coach Saban, Coach Saban is teaching these young men how to be men after the game. He's taking some of the most talented people in the United States, getting them all focused on the same page, and then he's going out and winning championships. And he's having kids graduate. I mean, the guy, if he would have been at Michigan State a little bit longer, we would have had a shot too. You know, any place he goes, he commits to it. He holds players. He holds coaches. He holds universities accountable for what needs to be done. And then he goes and does it. I mean, I love to do it. He's great. I love the way he coaches. I love his passion. You think Alabama's his last stop? It should be. Unless you want to, yeah, he should be. No more NFL for him? The Miami thing is the, is the last? No, no reason, no reason, no reason, no reason. He did that. Because, no you know, reason. you hear about you hear no people reason. talking about how a dude that it could get boring to him. I don't know how I don't know how winning gets boring. Just like I don't know how you can have too much money, but, you know, people say this. It can't get boring because every year he gets a new, a new group of freshmen that come in. Every year a new group of freshmen come in. And those freshmen, when they come in, I mean, that's a new group that he has to train and bring them on. And ultimately, every year, everybody wants to beat him. So he still has to come back up to the plate. So, I mean, it's a beautiful thing. It ain't nothing wrong with, with being able to drive your car without having no payment. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my man. <laughs> oh, man. TJ, man, I appreciate you taking out the time to join me, man. It was appreciate very, you, very educational. So have a good one, my man. You too, boss. Thank you. He's TJ Duckett, former uh, Michigan State running back, former Atlanta Falcons running back, as well as a gamut of other teams, the Washington Redskins, the Detroit Lions, the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, make sure you guys follow him on Twitter, at Todd Duckett. Like I said, he goes by Todd now. Or you can check him out on his website, tjduckett.com. If you want to find out about some of his uh, philanthropic, is that word right? Am I saying that right? Philanthropic work? You guys go to New World Flood. Dot org man tj duckett doing big things todd duckett excuse me doing doing big things post career